Are you excited? Yeah! Just give, giving the block one final clean. I still have little things in the, all the passages to make sure I don't put anything in there. I'll take them out in a second once I get it relatively clean. I'm not getting crud coming off with brake cleaner. And then we're going to put the head gasket on and the head back on. It's been over a month, actually longer, because we took the head off in Bahamas. So it's been a long time since we've had this head back on the engine. Alex is giving it one final wipe. He Yee! just oiled up the pistons. Yep. Or the uh, cylinders, anyway. And now she's just getting rid of any excess oil that might be on it or any other dirt. How happy are you right now to be opening that package? <laughs> oh, this is exciting. This is... Um... This is one of the parts, one of the first thing that we knew was probably broken on our engine because we were leaking oil. So that's the head gasket, a lovely $70 part. And there's a mark on it that tells you which side is top. the top. So you want it's not a mark, sure. it's actually legit set. want to make sure that's on the top. So let's install it. <laughs> so clean. It's going in the holes. It's perfect. Look at it, it's gorgeous. Thankfully, we filmed our process of dismantling the engine because through watching the old footage, we realized we messed up. I knew we messed up at some point because the numbers here on the bolts don't correlate with the bolt holes on our drawing here for 2GM. Um, but watching the video, it looks like we followed the 2GM 20 torque spec for uh, dissembling the, the engine which isn't the end of the world because really the seven and eight are the same and all the other numbers are just opposite. So we still went roughly in the same order. So it didn't, it won't really affect it, but I want to make sure to follow this diagram when we retorque it. So now we just got to change our numbers here. So you really want to pay attention to what you're doing. I clearly did not, but it's definitely beneficial to take videos and pictures of everything that you do to avoid any issues. This time we have the proper diagram and the right bolt pattern. So I'm oiling up the bolts, making sure they have a bit of oil on them. Number one goes here. All right, last bolt. And we have to put on the three nuts. I got all the bolts hand tight. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have one, two, three nuts. And I still gotta oil up the threads right nice. We're torquing this in three steps. The full torque is 72.3 pounds. So we're going to do 24 for, to start. All right, now we're at 48 pounds. One, number two is right here. I'm trying to make sure the calibration is right on the torque wrench because it's a cheap torque wrench. And I know this is right because we tested it against a few things. And I should have just calibrated it instead of trying to check every time I change my torque to make sure I'm, I have the correct torque. But I'm just doing things the hard way like I always seem to do. So anyway, I'm on my last torque, which is 72.3, something like that. What is it? Yeah, 72.3. So I'm trying to get it as close as I can. So I'm just adjusting the torque wrench since the numbers are off here to as close to where I think it might be. And then double checking it with my little gauge here. And I'm down in the bilge because these are the only 
bolts that I know that can take 70 pounds of force easily with without trouble uh, causing any issues. We already did all the big bolts at 72.3 and now we got to do 18.1 on the two small bolts and we are finished torquing the head. We got a rocker assembly all cleaned up, at least a little cleaned up, and I oiled it up a little bit. Now we're gonna slap her back on here. Make sure everything's good. Beautiful. Whoop. I'm oiling absolutely everything that goes back in the engine. So now it's push rods time. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing something like this, we are all pretty proactive here, wrote push rods, even though we know what they're called, but we wrote the numbers. I one, don't know what they're called. <laughs> one through four. But we didn't indicate which which direction was number one. Is, is number one the front of the engine or is it the back of the engine? Now from our memory, we're 98% sure that number one was at the front of the engine the way we labeled it but it would have saved us a lot of grief if we just wrote front or back or or pulley side or anything like that like we did with every other component so just keep that in mind don't just number it give yourself some indication of the front or the back what just happened what did you do well we have compression I was just turning the engine over slowly to make sure the push rods are sitting in their slots back there and it blew the ring out of the top here uh, through the injector. So I'm just going to hold this down and make sure. You hear it? We got compression. Okay, that one's turning and pushing. All right, I got all of the connecting rods connected, oil on both ends. And now I'm just putting the little valve retaining caps here on to uh, finish off the rocker assembly. Now what I have to do is torque these down to these two bolts down to spec and then check my clearances of all of these and adjust it with this. Loosening all the little lock nuts here for the valve adjustment. I didn't think I had to do this, but this is what the manual says. Now I'm just loosening the screw to bring them all the way up to the top so that when I tighten torque these two down they're not putting pressure on anything. We're torquing this up to 27 pounds. Slowly doing each nut back and forth so it kind of torques down evenly. So we should be aligned for the number two cylinder, which is this front cylinder, uh, for top dead center, which is something we have to align on the back of this transmission. Just a little more. Not back the other way, just more. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, right now, back a little. There we go, stop. All right. Yeah, we're aligned with cylinder one now. But as you can see, the gap here changes as I unscrew it gets bigger and as I screw it in, it gets smaller. So what we're gonna do here is adjust it to be two millimeters. So I'm just gonna tighten it enough so that it's close to, you know, I got a bit of tension on it. There we go. All right, so we're a little bit tight. It doesn't quite, uh, it slides in. I guess that's pretty darn close to be honest. But we're gonna try to loosen it just a touch. And there we go. It doesn't bind, it's nice and slips back and forth. All right, so I'd say that one's good. Now I can tighten up this nut, this lock nut. I'm gonna hold the screwdriver so I don't change the valve lash on me and tighten the lock nut. There we go. Now the valve lash should have stayed close to where it was. There we go. So I'm just double checking again. Um, the manual says the feeler gauge should have a slight pull, so a little bit of friction. So that's pretty good there. There's a little bit of pull.